Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the using security zones with Security Director Learning Byte. And here's our example. There's a few things I want to go over. First of all, we have VSREX1, and VSREX1 is connected to the internet using the internet zone uh, with Gigi000. And then in the servers zone, we have a syslog server and an email server. Now those are connected to VSRX1 using two different interfaces, Gigi001 and Gigi002 respectively. And then we have the last zone, the user zone, which is connected to user one. You know, there could be lots of other users and whatnot. That's just kind of the internal zone. And that is connected to that zone with Gigi003. Okay, so with that, we want to configure VSRX1 with security zones using security director. The users zone needs to have NTP enabled. So that means that if the user one needs to set the time on their local machine with NTP, they can use the IP address that is associated with Gigi003. And in the server's zone, we have Gigi001, which is connected to the syslog server. That needs to have ping, NTP, and SSH enabled. And then Gigi002, which the email server is connected to, needs to have just ping and NTP. And then lastly, the internet zone needs to have IKE, and HTTPS enabled for that security zone. And that could be for something like a, a remote access VPN. For example, if you use the Pulse client for a remote access VPN, then you need to enable IKE and HTTPS in that internet zone. Okay, and the last thing we need to do is to show some type of functionality is configure a basic security policy that permits traffic coming from the internal networks. That would be the server's zone and the user's zone and going to the internet. So with that, let's go ahead and get started and jump to the security director GUI. All right, so here is security director and this is just the dashboard. Nothing's really been added. This is just kind of a fresh install of security director. VSRX1 has already been discovered, so we don't need to do that. So let's go ahead and I don't know, where should we go? Let's try the configure mode. That's a logical place to go to configure security zones. And the thing here is you don't really configure security zones here. And the only thing that's anything close to security zones is under shared objects, we have zone sets. Well, zone sets are something you can do to group zones together. Like by default, you have the any zone set. So you could craft a security policy or a firewall policy that says from any zone to these zones or whatever. And that's how that works. So. This is not what we're really looking for. We don't want to configure zone sets. We want to configure the actual zones. And to do that, what you actually need to do in security directors, go to the devices workspace and then go to the security devices workspace, which it takes you there by default. So we're already there. Then we need to right click VSRX1, go to configuration and then modify configuration. Then after that, the modify configuration window pops up. And you can see on the left side, we have basic setup, static routes, routing instances, physical interfaces, things like that. And if we keep going down, we'll see a zones section. Select the zones and okay, so this looks promising. Uh, we have zones, we can create a new zone. We can see we don't have any zones and that's okay. That's what we want for this learning byte. So let's click the create button. Let's first configure the internet zone and the next thing we need to do is select the interface that we want to use and that's going to be the gigi 000 interface move that over and then we can select the system services now keep note here we have is accept and a checkbox and so if we wanted to exclude some system services we would select that checkbox and then we'd select the services we wanted to exclude but we don't want to do that for this learning byte i just wanted to point that out so the first thing we need to do here is find IKE. We can search for that. It's going to be a lot easier than scrolling. Move it over and then HTTPS. Move it over. Okay, so those are our two host inbound traffic settings we need for system services. And you can see Nexus protocols. It's got an is except checkbox as well. And we don't want any protocols for this, so we're okay. And then we have some other traffic control options. We have TCP reset. We can select a screen if we are configuring screens and we're not doing that right now. So keep that in mind, we can do that. And then we could actually 
just specify the host inbound traffic information for an individual interface in this last section. And for this, we only have one interface in this zone. We don't need to worry about that. Let's click OK. Then let's configure the next zone. Let's configure the servers. And that's going to be two interfaces, Giggy1 and Giggy2. Move those over. And recall that one interface needs some type of host inbound traffic parameters, and the other interface needs something else. So, well, how should we do this? Well, let's go ahead and just take care of Giggy001 first. And that was ping. And then after ping, NTP. And recall, this is setting it for the entire zone right now. And then SSH. And so we got that set for the whole zone, but we can't leave it at this because Giggy002 only needs ping and NTP. So let's scroll down and we can configure Giggy002 specifically. So we just want ping. And then NTP. And by doing that, since we don't have a specific interface configuration for Giggy001, it'll receive the zone configuration, which will be ping, NTP, and SSH for host inbound traffic. And then with Giggy2, we specify just NTP and ping, so it'll only get the ping and NTP parameters here. And then the last zone we need to configure is the users zone, the Giggy3 interface. And here is just NTP for system services. And we're done with that. And then we can save, we can preview changes, we can save and deploy. Let's preview changes. And we can see here, if you're familiar with the CLI at all, you can see that we have the internet zone configuration, the servers zone configuration, as well as the users zone configuration. So let's click save and deploy and see what happens. And we want to run now, we'll run this job at this time. We don't want to schedule it for later. You can definitely do that if you want. And oh no, we have a problem. It failed. And uh, this is actually, I planned this for this learning byte because there is something kind of specific you need to be aware of. Now, if we look at the description, it's a little hard to figure out, but if we just hover over it, we can see what the problem is. At the very end, you can see lock failure with an explanation mark. Cannot continue with the update. And then it says, to unlock the device, please try you know, such and such. It kind of gets cut off there. But that means the configuration database is locked. And that's a problem. We want to unlock that configuration database. Security director needs the configuration database not to be locked. So to do that, let's go ahead and just jump to the CLI and commit the configuration that's there and then move on. All right, so here is the CLI of BSREX1. We look at rollback zero. And yeah, we can see there is some configuration here. We can either get rid of that, just commit it. I'm just gonna commit it. And then let's go ahead and jump back and try to run that job again. So right click on VSRX1, go to configuration, modify configuration. Those configuration changes have been saved already. So let's click save and deploy again. Click run now. And things should work out a little better this time. And great, we have success. That's perfect, that's what we want. The configuration was deployed successfully. All right, so let's go ahead and go to configuration mode now, because we do have one last thing to do. We want to configure that security policy using those new zones we just created. We'll call this firewall policy zones SD-LB for learning byte. Move SRX1 over, click OK. Click add rule for that new firewall rule. And we'll call this rule zones-lb. Click next and here we can select the zone. Here we're going to select servers and users. Leave everything else the defaults of any. Then we'll select internet. So it's going from the users or servers zone going to the internet. Change this to permit. Click next, finish this rule off. And then let's save it and let's click update. And let's click publish and update to finish this. And great, the policy was published 
and updated successfully to the VSRX1 device. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we talked about how to configure security zones using Security Director, and we verified security zone usage in Security Director by creating a new security policy. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.